Welcome to worship, and Happy New Year. It's good to be together. Let us worship God. Emmanuel, God is with us. We have heard, heard the, promise the promise of the prophets and caught the, the notes, notes of the angel's song. We've seen the star in the heavens, and we have believed. We, we seek, seek a Messiah who, who will reign with justice. justice. We've come to praise God, who has done wonderful things among us. In, in Jesus, Jesus Christ, God, God has shown us love, giving light for our darkness and strength for our days. Let us pray. Loving God, just like the wise men, we seek you and bow down and worship you. Help us now hear your words of love in this hour, that we may worship you and then go to pass along that message through service to others. May we rejoice in serving you through Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. On this Epiphany Sunday, when we remember the wise men following a star to find the light of the world, we come to our time of confession and remember that we too walk in darkness and need Christ's light. So let us use the prayer printed in the bulletin, followed by our own silent individual confessions. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, God with us, you came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. We have not always lived up to our expectations for us. We confess that too often we are impoverished of spirit. Grant us the fullness of your grace. Wrapped up in ourselves, open us to others. Slow to learn, teach us of your ever-expanding truth. Proud over little, wet our hunger and thirst for justice. Scattered like grains of the field, gather us unto a single loaf. Distracted of mind, direct us to what is most important, 
your love, love for us, your, your will, will for our lives, and your sustaining presence at all times. times. Amen. Hear the good news. God has forgiven us our sins and set us on new paths. Let us follow Christ's light and trust in God's mercy to restore our lives in right relationship with others and with our God. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Please be seated. Good morning. My name is Mike Osborne. I'm Linda's husband. These are our two daughters. Kelly and Eliza, we suffered a family loss this week. Our nephew Luke, he was 23. He left behind two loving parents, David and Karen, and a loving brother, Tyler. He was 23 years old, a senior at University of Maine studying <coughs> fisheries and wildlife. We miss him terribly. He was a smart, engaging person. And since he was this tall, he could name everything that crawled, walked, flew, or swam. And he was always right. And we'll miss him forever. We also lost a church family member this week, Joanne Lawson, who did, as you all know, did a lot for the church. I had the good pleasure of sitting next to her a few times in the choir loft here. And not only could she sing, but she told a great story and didn't leave out any of the juicy parts. <laughs> and we just learned Deb Grimm had a family loss as well this week. His name was Harper Lindsay, 23 years old. It's a tragic loss and they're really hurting. So we'd like to honor them with this song today.
Our responsive reading is Psalm 72, verses 1 through 14, which speaks about God's care and his ability to defend his people. Please join me in this reading. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to a king's son. With justice. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people, give deliverance to the needy, and crush the oppressor. May he live while the sun endures and as long as the moon throughout all generations. May he be like rain that falls on the mown grass like showers that water the earth. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound until the moon is no more. May he have dominion from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. May his foes bow bow down before him and his enemies lick the dust. May the kings of Tarshish and of the isles render him tribute May the kings of Sheba and Seba bring gifts. May all kings fall down before him. All nations give him service. For he delivers the needy when they call, the poor and those who have no helper. He has pity on the weak and the needy and saves the lives of the needy. From oppression and violence, he redeems their life and precious is their blood in his sight. I just want to say thank you, choir. That was beautifully done. Here's bread, here is the cup, and in him is healing. Our scripture lesson today It's from the Gospel according to Matthew, the second chapter, verses 1 through 12. Hear the word of God. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophets, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel." Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, They were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. And that ends our lesson. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Time marches on. Would you believe that in a month and a half it will be the beginning of Lent and time to consider the final days of Christ's life? But before we let time march us on to his adult life and death and resurrection, we look one last time at baby Jesus. The three eastern wise men set out from their land far away when they saw a star shining in the west. And that is what our time will deal with this morning, our own intentionality in looking for Christ. We begin with those wise men. They're referred to in the gospel as magi, never as kings. 
And it's only in later tradition that they've been given royal status. The phrase, we three kings, has no biblical basis, although it is a nice sentiment. The Bible also mentions that, uh, does not mention that there were three of them, just that there were three different gifts that the Magi brought, the gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So we've associated one with each of them, but it doesn't say that. The term Magi refers to a defeated people who had, been, who had become advisors to the Persian kings. They were scientists and dream readers and astronomers. And I've wondered just what it was that those astronomers saw in the eastern sky to begin with that led them hundreds of miles eventually to the west and away from their home. Was it a supernova? That is a star that is burning itself out in one last big burst of energy and flame. Or maybe a comet with a tail pointing down towards a particular direction of, at the ground that they said, well, let's, let's follow where it's pointing. How do you follow a star? I came across an interesting article concerning some theories about the star that those wise men followed. The author had gone to a planetarium in Chicago where they rolled back the sky to around that time and to that location in the Middle East to see what the sky would have looked like around the birth of Christ. And along with the reading from a book, The Birth of Christ Recalculated, the author came up with a theory. And that is that these particular magi were astronomers who would have noticed something quite unusual in the heavens around that time. In August of one of those years, the planets Jupiter and Venus rose in conjunction in the morning sky in the east. Two planets that rise so closely together that it's almost impossible to tell that there are two, it looks just like one, is known as uh, rising in conjunction. And that was a significant event in the sky, you might even say of astronomical proportions. Jupiter stood for kingship and Venus for birth and motherhood. So the likely interpretation was that the king, a king, was to be born. Who, or at least where? The conjunction occurred in the constellation of Leo, the symbol of the tribe Judah of the Hebrew people to those magi. And over the next nine months, the planet Jupiter, symbol of kingship, rose and met the star Venus uh, in the constellation of Leo three times. And finally, that conjunction occurred one last time in the 10th month in the west in the evening sky, the exact direction from where they were towards Jerusalem. The only possible explanation based on all of this is that a very powerful Jewish king had been born in Israel. Now all of that is speculation, based on how the stars would have looked. But we know that for whatever reason, those magi traveled from their homes to see a king that the stars had proclaimed. It could be that they left at the first conjunction, the, the three subsequent conjunctions continued to get them to move along, and finally, they saw that star in the west that pointed exactly where they needed to go, and saw it and began to rejoice, as it says, with exceeding great joy. Now we may scoff uh, today at somebody doing something like that back then based on stars and, and interpretations, but recall that our own Easter date is based on when the full moon happens after the spring, spring equinox. It's the first Sunday after the first full moon after the spring equinox, which is why the day of Easter continues to move. So, entering Jerusalem, the Magi must have been disappointed to hear that the Jewish puppet king, Herod, had not had any new children. There was not a new king to be born there in Jerusalem to lead the people. Herod was a foreman Roman officer who had been given Palestine to rule as a reward for his service in the army. He had his own wise men to try and figure out where this new king was to be born that he had learned of, learned of from these magi, and they came up with the answer of Bethlehem, 
just five miles south of town. So on the wise men traveled, seeking and searching. It's not likely that they were there for the birth because it says that they found him in a house. So apparently they had moved up in their accommodations by then. But they found him after months of travel, expense, and effort. And however they came to be there, they accomplished their goal of finding the newborn king. Often we hear the saying, come, Lord Jesus. And he did just that. But in a general way, consider that he came to the world as a baby, totally dependent on those around him, completely immobile. The shepherds and magi could say, come, Lord Jesus. But he was a baby and couldn't go anywhere. It was that they had to journey to him. He came to earth, and having read the portents in the sky and the signs, it was up to the wise men to go and seek him. And perhaps it's the same today. We want God in our lives, and we say, oh, come to us, abide with us, when what may be necessary is to go down the street to where he is staying. He was born in an out-of-the-way place rather than an easily found place like a palace in Jerusalem. Jesus just might be waiting for us to come to him to offer our worship and our service. So since there are no heavenly conjunctions occurring tonight that I know of, where do we find him? Let me offer two suggestions. And both have to do with putting ourselves in a position where that might occur. It's hard to learn to repair an engine if you've never entered a garage or at least taken a motor repair class. It's hard to learn to fly a plane if you've never met with a flight instructor or uh, been in a cockpit. It's hard to learn to make good food if you've never been in a kitchen. It's like that one commercial where uh, there's a roof and you can see that a tree has landed on it and broken through and, and people are outside looking at this disaster and a young man walks up and says, I'll take care of it. I've watched a lot of HGTV. I know what to do. Give me a hammer and a level and a Ginsu knife. Well, watching HGTV does not make you an expert on how to repair a roof. And it's the same thing with our faith. God has come to our world, but if we don't travel to see him, he'll just be there in that manger or in that house. Growing in our faith means putting ourselves in a place where we get to meet God, like the shepherds and the wise men did, which means us going to see him. And where is that? Jesus said, as much as you did it for the least of these, you did it to me. So the first place that you could meet him is right here in this church. Because through our church, it can mean meeting him in the least of these by purchasing a Christmas stocking, fill, filling that, that stocking with gifts for a needy child. It could be donating to our food pantry. It can be helping our children learn about the good, excuse me, the good news next door. Or working together on a mission project, either indirectly by your tithes and offerings, or traveling to Manor House to help feed the hungry. You have to start somewhere. So why not start your search here or continue it here? But second, Jesus can most often be found outside these walls. Sometimes the star leads to other foreign lands, but often it's just right around the corner like the shepherds who were on a hillside just outside of Bethlehem that first Christmas, Jesus was there in their town, just down the road. But the rest was up to them. They heard from angels, but they still had to go and see. Those in the inn, when Jesus was being born out back, those in the inn decided to, uh, let's just stay inside, let's stay warm, let's have a, a warm night's sleep when just outside, out back in that out-of-the-way place, was life and fulfillment and a king worthy of praise and a lifetime of service. Think of what they missed. In the places 
just around the corner are those places you may hear the cry of Jesus to come and meet him. It's not very far, but unless you are seeking, you probably won't hear the call. The Magi saw a star and set out to find him. The shepherds heard the angels and set out to find him. The signs are there to guide us to him, and he's done his part in making himself known. Our part is to listen and to seek the Christ wherever he may be. So we can say, come Lord Jesus. And he does, but it might not be right to our doorstep. It may mean that we have to go to him. Let us pray. Lord God, you call, and yet often we don't hear. So unstop our ears of our own self-interest so that we may hear the voices you use to speak to us, and then guide us in our journey to meet with and worship and serve you. For we pray in the name of the one who came to us at Bethlehem and who comes to us again in Branchville. Amen. Verses 1, 2, and 5. Please join with me in stating what we believe using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated.
Good morning. Well, we're so glad that we can all be together, those of us here in the sanctuary, those of you there online. It's good to be back in worship uh, this week. Kay and I were off for a week, uh, and we did get to worship with you online, and we're very impressed with Robin leading the music and Mike Opilla in officiating. Thank you, Mike. So it's the second Sunday of January, which means uh, we're now into our resolutions a little bit, right? Did anybody make one? Make a resolution? If so, how's that going? Mine is going very well, which was to uh, lose 10 pounds, and so far I only have 15 to go. <laughs> we have a, a couple of announcements, a few announcements to share. Session meets tomorrow night at 7 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. We will finalize the budget uh, based on the pledges that have come in. Uh, thanks to all of you for making your pledge and the uh, offerings that you give. We also have a couple of new members who are going to be joining. And uh, we will be working uh, on a few other things there as well. So please join us, those who are in the on the session in room four tomorrow night at seven. Next Sunday, I, I'm calling for a nominating committee meeting during coffee hour. That will be in room four. Uh, in two weeks, on the 29th, there is a potluck lunch followed by a congregational meeting. Next door in the fellowship hall, we will review, review and approve the annual reports from 2022 and elect officers. But then next month, there is a cakewalk that's being planned. Uh, it's the beginning of season of Lent with an Ash Wednesday service and a soup supper, so good things on the horizon. I would like to pass along to you arrangements that I know of uh, regarding Joanne Lawson's funeral. Uh, she passed away earlier this week after a, a long fight with cancer. We're going to miss her greatly. And uh, the service is planned for next Saturday at 11 o'clock here in the church. Uh, we will go up the road to the Branchville Frankfurt Cemetery and then back here for lunch for a reception afterwards. Uh, I've heard that a busload of folks who are members of the New York Choral Society that Joanne and John were in uh, are going to be here. So it looks like there's going to be a good amount of music during the service. We hope that you can be here to help us honor Joanne. So in our prayers this morning, besides John and Eve and the rest of uh, the Lawson family, let's include Eileen and Irene and Greg, Marie Posnack, Dave Marion, Gail Danko and Greg Stetzel, Paul and Stephanie, Esther, Fred and Kim, Marilyn Adams, uh, and Paul Sutphin, that may be the Paul that someone referred to back here. Uh, Paul is in the ICU, uh, he's, he's struggling to get his strength back, so let's keep Paul and his family in our prayers. Dan, Mr. Pipers, Reverend Keyes, Chris, and Scott Williams, the Stroud family, on the passing of Luke and all of, all of his family. Uh, today we have from our prayer list the family of Harper Lindsay and Michelle and Dee, Lisa, Mary Kinney and Kenny, Danny Cantwine, Laura who's recovering from hip surgery, Barbara Z, Beth, and Joyce O. So let's take a little bit of time now to approach God in prayer, beginning in silence, to offer our own petitions and supplications. After a time of silence, I'll offer a pastoral prayer. The Lord's Prayer will be during communion. Let us pray.
loving God who created the stars that shine brightly each night and used one bright one to direct the Magi to the birth of our Savior, we ask for your direction during this season of Epiphany. God of light and hope, may our talents and our lives bring more of your light to the pains and sorrows of the world. Help us as members of the body of Christ to stay alert to your word whenever we hear it. Grant us courage to follow the light of any star you, have, you may have placed in our sky. And grant us patience so that whenever some cherished promise of yours is delayed almost beyond endurance, we may nevertheless remain faithful to you as our loving God who keeps promises. Journey with us this year in times of trouble. Bless us with stillness and rejoice with us in the happiness to be found all along the way. May your love surround our resting and our hurrying, our laughing and our worrying. God of stars and signs, shine your light on our paths. We confess that although we live in a nation with noble aspirations, we have fallen short of your glory. Forgive us for choosing what is comfortable over what is true and right. Forgive us for leaning into darkness as a solution rather than looking up to you for the guiding light we need. We place our nation and ourselves in your hands, just as you guided the Magi. Guide us to share gifts that protect the vulnerable. Make us bold to speak the truth in love. Keep us from weak indifference. Pour out your Spirit upon us to choose the better way, your way that leads to wholeness and healing and repair. Hear our prayers this day, not only for our nation, but for those we know of who have special needs of your care and presence that we have named to you aloud and in our silence. Bless them and bless us in reaching out to them. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. God has given us light and life and resources to live a good life, so let us follow his example and give in return. Please use one of the methods listed in the bulletin so that we can get our church off to a great start this new year.
let us pray. For all you do for us, we give you thanks for the homes we live in, the food we eat, the productive tasks we are able to perform, and the loving relationships we get to experience. We give you thanks. Please light our path ahead so that we can walk it with you and therefore know that the darkness will never overcome us. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Please take a moment and greet your fellow people next to you. <laughs> Thank you. Please be seated. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. We come from north and south and east and west to join together here at this table to be reminded that we are children of God, that we have a loving heavenly parent, that we are a part of the family of faith, and so that all who trust in Jesus Christ as their Lord are invited to participate in this meal. It's our custom to hold the elements until all have been served that we might commune together. Please join me in the litany of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us pray. We praise you, loving God, that because you sent Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born of Mary for us, we might be delivered from sin and death 
and become your forgiven children of life. Therefore, we join with the choirs of angels in their unending praise, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven or earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. All glory and blessing are yours, Lord God, for in your great mercy you gave us your only Son, who took on our human nature and suffered death on the cross to redeem us. We praise you that our Savior gave us this holy sacrament and commanded us to continue it as a lasting memorial of his death and sacrifice until he comes again. So, merciful God, by your Holy Spirit, bless and make holy both us and these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread and the cup may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. So we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you. Through Christ and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, may all glory and honor be yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. For we pray this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray and to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so on the night in which he was betrayed, after supper, Jesus took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. Whenever you do this, do so in my name, remembering me. And so ministering in his name, we offer you this bread, saying, this is the body of Christ. Yes. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. The body of Christ offered for you. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, gave it to them, saying, This cup is the new covenant, 
sealed in my blood, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do so remembering me. So ministering in his name, we offer you this cup, saying this is the blood of Christ. Thank you. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Cut off from me, you can do nothing. The blood of Christ offered for you. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for the blessing of inviting us to this table for bread and cup and all the blessings you send that remind us of your loving presence. May we go and serve others, even as you have served us. Go with us and guide our steps, our words, our actions, and our hearts. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
So let us go out into the world as God's people. Let us go and remember that he is with us every step of the way. Let us remember that God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is with us now and forevermore. Amen. Yeah, right here.